Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Shannon, and today we have another good lesson from you, taken from Philippians, chapter 3, 15 to 19, I believe, and it's called, The Enemies of the Cross of Christ. Please stay tuned. Philippians, chapter 3, verse number 12. Philippians 3, verse number 12. Brother Rico, can you get that up there? Philippians 3, verse 12. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I apprehend of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same things. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ mm -hmm. whose end is destruction whose God is their own belly and whose glory is their shame who mind earthly things. I want to talk about the enemies of the cross of Christ. Are you an enemy of the cross of Christ? What does it mean to be an enemy? An enemy. One that opposes another Opponents, the devil is an enemy of the cross of Christ. Why is it that the devil is an enemy of the cross of Christ? Because of what the cross of Christ stands for or represents. Please listen. You can't tell me that you love the cross of Christ but you hate the church of Christ. You can't tell me you love the cross of Christ and you don't like the Bible of Christ. Amen, somebody. You can't tell me you love the cross of Christ and don't particularly care what the blood of Christ does. 
In our lesson this morning, I want you to really listen. I guess the older I get, uh, I preach a lesson one or two times and it just don't seem to come out good. I preached this lesson before, but the older I get, I think I can do it a little better. Are you listening? The enemies of the cross of Christ. Let me just oh, get going pretty good. When you talk about the cross of Christ, you're talking about the atonement by the blood of Jesus. Uh-huh. What do you mean atonement? At one meant. What do you mean by that? We are reconciled Back to God by the blood of Jesus. Well, what do you mean by that? What? Well, you can't even approach God without this atoning work that Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. When you talk about the blood of Christ, you're talking about redemption. Mm -hmm. What is redemption? Remission of sin. You see it, don't you? When you talk about the blood of Christ, you're talking about reconciliation. What do you mean? Reconciliation means friends with God again. Uh-huh. What Adam lost and what we lost when we sinned, when we obey the gospel, we are added to the one body. Amen. We can be friends of God again in the one body. Right. If you're not in the one body, it's impossible for you to be friends with God. Right. Talk to him. And you couldn't have the one body without the blood of Christ. And the blood of Christ was shedded on the cross of Calvary. Now, well, the blood of Christ, watch it, amen, is tied with the revelation. What do you mean? That's the one faith. How in the world you say, well, I, I like the blood, I love the cross of Christ. Some individuals wear them around the neck. And the enemies of the cross and don't even know it. Some individuals got a big cross and all on their buildings. And the enemies of the cross of Christ and don't even know it. Well, what is the enemy? Everything that the cross of Christ stands for, they're against it. Right. People against the Bible, they're against the cross of Christ. Yes, sir. People against the body of Christ, the church of Christ, they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Now watch these denominational people. Watch all of them. Every one of them. Bellevue Baptist. Watch this. If somebody came on and said Bellevue Baptist Church, what does that mean? You don't see Christ nowhere. Right. New Salem Baptist Church. You don't see Christ nowhere. Right. Make it plain, preach. Golden Gate. You don't see Christ nowhere. They don't even recognize Christ. And they got big crosses up there. Go out here on Highway 40 going toward Nashville. You see Bellevue Love Memphis with three big crosses and they don't know that they're enemies of the cross of Christ. The cross of Christ has nothing to do with the Baptist. Amen. Pretty good. Amen now. In our list, we I'm going to get to my text here. I'm going to point this out just in case I forget it. There are two classes of enemies. Hey, man, two classes. Two classes of enemies of the cross. What do you mean, Brother Santa? Here, here we go. Look, look, look at this thing. Two classes of enemies that hinder salvation. See, when you're talking about an enemy of the cross, you're talking about something that hinders or prevent people from being saved. Right. Now watch this now. Yes, oh, this is that. If you're a member of the Church of Christ and you don't live right and you cause somebody to stumble, you're an enemy of the cross of Christ. Right. Boy, that's good preaching there. Yes, Boy, that's sure enough good preaching. Yes, Any enemies in here? Make it plain, Anybody enemy? You doing anything to keep somebody from obeying the gospel, you're an enemy of the cross of Christ. Right. Oh, boy, I need to go and do this right now. Amen. James 4, 4. Pretty good. James, amen, amen. James 4, 
and four. I get this out the way now. Hey man, Mike, you talking about singing this morning? Boy, you did some singing this morning. Man, man, you don't know it, but you singing this morning. The church was singing this morning, and we sing about Jesus. Pretty good. What it did for it? Look what it says: Ye adulterers and adulteries, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? If you're a friendship of the world, you're enemy of the cause of Christ. Well, you don't even know it. Now, watch this. You got two kinds of enemies. You got the conscious enemies. And you got the unconscious enemies. Let's do that again. You got the conscious. What do you mean? You know what they know what they're doing. But you got the unconscious, they don't know. They don't know. And you may be here today. And you may be an unconscious enemy of the law of the cross of Christ and don't even know it. Amen. You know, ignorance is a terrible thing. Yes, sir. It's real ignorance is a terrible thing when you don't know. Right. Uh, pretty good. Let, let, let's go on here a little further here now. In our text, what we have here, three major points, 15 to 16 of Philippians 3, we have encouraged. The faithful. Very good. I want to encourage you this morning. First of all, don't be an enemy of the cross of Christ. See, sometimes members of the church have sabotaging members of the Lord's church. What do you mean? A lot of members do destructive stuff to the church. Sometimes they're aware of it. They're, they're conscious. They want to destroy the church. Members. Got it? Now. But then we have, watch this here, number two, verse 17, examples to follow. Verse 17. Good. All right. Uh, verse 18, we have enemies are false. Yes, sir. Pretty good. So far, so good. All right. Then number four, verse 19 the end of the fraudulent. What do you mean? The false ones. Yes, sir. What's going to happen to them? God's in charge. Right. Amen. He's going to close the deal. Yes, sir. On all of us. Now, some of y'all already trying to go to sleep. Look at no, Don't even try it now. No, 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 don't do that now. All right. Let's run down the text. Pretty good? Amen. Amen. This is real good, boy. Let's look at it. Consistent. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. And that word perfect there doesn't mean sinlessly perfect. It means mature. It means adult. Yes, sir. Listen carefully. Are you mature in the faith? Yeah, my preacher. How long have you been in the church? Are you mature? Does somebody have to shake and wake you and make you ask you, are you going to go worship God? Are you mature enough? So, man, this is the first day of the week. I got to go worship my God. Amen. Are you mature enough to say, listen, I need to give for the cause of Christ. Amen. When you don't give, you are enemy of the cross of Christ. Right. You don't even know it. Amen. And can't no good come out of that. Right. That's good. Who is that good? Yes, sir. That's good. Preacher. Sister Crump, is that good, Sister Crump? Sister Crump, bless your heart, I see you out there. Amen. I like words of Sister Crump. She said, when you, I see Sister Crump, how you doing? She said, bless. Amen, somebody. We are blessed. Yes, we are too stressed to be blessed. Yes, Amen. We, we are blessed. We're not going to let anything stress us out. Good. Pretty good? Watch this, mature, be thus minded. Well, if you go back to verse 12 all the way down, he talked about, He's reaching for the mark right. of the high calling. Right. He's not going to let anything stop it. Right. Mature people, you have problems, but you ain't quitting. Right. Make it flame, preacher. He ain't going to stop. Yeah. No. Yeah. Conflicts. Look what it says. And if any, in anything ye be otherwise minded, watch it. You're going to have some conflicts, some stuff that's going to mess with your mind. Right. Don't let that stop you. Right. That's good, preacher. The devil's out there doing his job. That's right. Amen. That's right. Clarity. God shall reveal them 
uh, fulfill even this unto you. Now, in the context there, perhaps, in the early church, they had miraculous gifts, and they were guided not the way we're guided today. Right, right, well, they were guided with the Holy Spirit uh, in them working miraculously, but we're guided today by the Holy Spirit, but it's through the book. Right. If you want the Holy Spirit to guide you, you better put your head in his textbook. Amen. He's got a text, T-E-X-T, -E yes, textbook. You know how he teaches? He teaches with his textbook. Right. Now, you can pray and moan and ask God to reveal it to you. You'll be whistling a long time. It ain't going to happen. Right. Got to read it. All right. Then, complete it. Look at this. Nevertheless, in other words, the word nevertheless mean yet. Whereunto, here's another translation, as to what we have already attained. Watch this. The criteria. What's the criteria? That's the standard. His, look at this here. Let us walk by the same rule. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Sometimes I think that members of the Church of Christ uh, some of them, not all of them. They got their own Bible. <laughs> Joe, I believe sometimes they got their own Bible. Why? Because it, the, the, our Bible that we study out in Hebrews 11, Hebrews uh, uh, 10, 25, not forsaking themselves and ourselves together as mine or some is, but exhorts one another so much more as we see the day approach. See, if apparently some members of the church, quite even at James Road, that ain't in their Bible. Because they'll miss that any assembly. Amen. Same rule. Let us look here. Let us walk by the same, same rule. Same. Yes, same. Look at First Corinthians. First, is that pretty good? First Corinthians, amen. Chapter 1, verse number 10. Let's look at that. Pretty good? We're going to run on down here. Same. Amen. Same. All right, second wrenches, amen. I want second wrenches. One ten, uh, brother McKenzie, read it. First wrenches, one ten. I know what I'm doing. Yes, I may be old, but I ain't lost my mind yet. <laughs> First wrenches, one ten says what? Now I beseech you. I beseech you, brethren, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read it. That ye all speak the same thing. Wait, wait a minute. Do we? When we don't speak the same thing, we are enemies of the cross of Christ. Right. Amen. Let us all speak the same thing. What else? And that there be no divisions among you. Read. But that ye be perfectly joined together in, in the, the same, same mind, mind and, and in the same, same judgment. judgment. Same. Same. Sometimes you get a chance, look up same. Acts chapter 2, verse number 36 Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same yes, Jesus, yes, whom you have crucified, yes, both Lord and Christ. Same. Yes, I like that. Same. Same. Well, how in the world can you make it the same? Second Corinthians 4 and verse 13, uh, Paul said, We have in the same spirit of faith yes, according that is what? Written. It's written. Yes, Written, wait a minute. It's written, Mark. It's written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. If we speak what's written and obey what's written, we're going to be all right. It's written. Amen. Now, where is it written that some be called Baptists and some be called Methodists? That ain't in the Bible. That ain't in there. If you wearing a name, that's not given in the New Testament. You are enemy of the cause of Christ. And that's causing division. Right. Amen. Whoever heard of a Baptist church. Find it in the Bible. Amen. Yes, sir. Make it plain, a Methodist. Somebody said to me. I, just, I hate about you. You always picking on these other churches. I ain't picking on other churches. I'm just letting you know. They ain't in the Bible. Right. That's all I'm saying. Right. Yes, you can find them on the internet. You can't find them in the Bible. Not, not one of them. Right. They can jump and shout and play music and do all that stuff. Ain't going to heaven either. Right. 
There ain't no remission of sin in denominationalism. None at all. Somebody said, I'm a member of that church, and my mother died in that church, and I know she's going to heaven. You don't know where your mother's at. God is no respected person. He wouldn't say your mother, she ain't obeyed his word. Everybody want to talk about their mama. And my mama, mama didn't die for you. It was Jesus. Say, can you see that fox? What did I say? Cogitate. What cogitate? Think. Cogitate. What? Let us mind the same thing. Wait, wait a minute. Cogitate on it. Why in the world are we divided? Religiously. Why are we divided? One Bible and all these different denominations. Man, I don't nobody, nobody believe that but a crazy man. Right. They jumping on me on television. Say, you know that little old preacher Jane Road up there? He just, it's something wrong with him. It's something wrong. It's something wrong. No, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm what I'm doing is cutting all that junk that's in the world. And some of my brethren want to infiltrate, want to go out there and fraternize with that foolishness. Right. Brother, you can't be saving that stuff. Right. And members of the Church of Christ, we got to teach you. Right. And all this jumping and clapping and shouting, that stuff ain't, they jumping and shouting and clapping and going to hell. Right. Having a good time going to hell. A lot of people doing that don't even know it. Right. Amen. Let me get on here now. Same thing. Now, that, that's to encourage the faithful. I want to encourage you know, we got some mighty faithful folks at Jane Road. Right. Amen. We got some folks at Jane Road that's mighty, mighty faithful. Yes, and I'm praying that God continue to bless you. Yes, but I, we got some that ain't came up there yet. Some of them come up to the back and they keep scratching out. They ain't never hit a home run at all. They ain't never hit a ball at all. And I'm praying that you keep practicing. Just keep on practicing. Hitting that, you're going to hit that ball. Right. But don't, don't quit now. We got a lot of members of the church here. Some of them, they just don't hardly just, they just kind of ease in. They ain't doing nothing too much. You know, they come in and worship a little bit and then, you know, tip, take a little sip of juice and leave out. And you, you just playing right now. One of these days, you're going to grow up and say, wait a minute. My time ain't real long. I need to do, my, do myself a little bit. I'm, I'm talking to somebody. I said, Brother Shannon, you're talking directly at me. Sure, I am. And you ought to like me for telling you this. You got to do better than what you're doing. I mean, you know, you got to, these for baseball teams, uh, Rico, and every time they put you up to hit the ball and you're striking out, wait a minute, just think about it. Think of everybody in there, what that thing, that hole, dug out, every one of them get up there, three of them get up there and strike out. Well, you ain't going to ever go nowhere. Somebody's going to have to start hitting. Right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Somebody's going to have to start hitting. Wait a minute. What is, the, what is the devil throwing you that you can't ever hit nothing? <laughs> He's throwing some courage on you. Hey, Amen. You need to get your eyes focused right. Look here. Watch that rascal. Look at Wait a minute. You remember the church choir? You ought to hit a home, hit a ball every once in a while. Blunt or do something. Hey Amen. You can't hit blunt. Hey Amen, Joe. Blunt. Hey Amen. Everybody, look here. Stand up here and strike out. Strike out. Here come another. How? Wait a minute. Hold it. Yeah, do something. Hey Amen. That's, that's good. Let's, let's go on here. Example. First example. Paul says, Brethren, watch Paul, be followers together of me. Why? Because Paul has got the truth in him. Yeah, right. You got it? Free. Got him? Faithful example. Uh, follow me, them which walk as so as you have us for an example. Let's stop a moment. Good, Any men here good examples? Yep. Wait a minute. You remember the Church of Christ? What kind of example you said on your job? If you're acting crazy on your job, let me just throw this in too. Sometimes you got folks in our city, they don't like what's going on. They like to get on the bridge and march. Wait a minute, you don't have no business on no bridge 
lest you go cross it in a car. Amen. What are you doing? Let, wait, now I got to say this. Members of the church don't have no fellowship with denomination of people who want to march. Who told you you got to march? Who told you that? That comes from denominationalism. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharp, all those false teachers who are enemies of the cross of Christ. Yeah, I'm coming down any rest of them. They ain't, running, they ain't preaching no Christ. Amen. Out there marching, yes, trying to get something. Lost as a goose. Yes, Dead in your sins. Yes, sir. And they ain't got something up to tell you. And here I am telling you the truth and you're going to make me cock at it. Like I said, nothing wrong with me. And I said, you know, you preach, you, you, brother, ain't you a preaching church choir? You don't ever be out on no bridge march. I said, man, I did enough marching in the army and in Vietnam. I ain't doing no more marching. <laughs> None of that foolishness. Uh, <laughs> if I'm, wait, wait a minute, now watch this now. These same birds uh, get out there and march for some, some whatever. But they won't march for the cause of Christ. Right. How many signs you see we are marching for the cause of Christ? Amen, somebody. I don't want that. Amen. Amen. Let's go on here now. Uh, what kind of example, ladies, are you sharing as a member? See, if you get on, I'm, I'm working on them. I got to work on them. I got to work on them, Alice. I got to work on them, girl. I got to work on them. They get on YouTube or Facebook, put all that sinful stuff Guess what they're doing? They are enemies yes, of the cross of Christ. Right. Why? Yes, because that filth and sinful stuff that you're putting on Facebook, that ain't helping people to be saved. Right. That's helping them be lost. Right. 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 I'm, I'm cutting this more. Yes, sir. Mark, you asked me, you say, Brother Shannon, you're going to cut. I don't want to cut nobody. Right. Right. I got to be sharp this morning, Wesley. Right. Right. Hey, Amen. Wait a minute. Young people. You remember the church of Christ? Why you want to be like the people in the world? The people in the world are not trying to save nobody and you running with them. Oh, I'm cutting this morning. But that's good here. All right, all right, let's go a little. Be a good example. Faithful example. Follow somebody in the church that's, faith, that's faithful. Follow a lady or a brother in the church that's faithful. Why you want to follow? I mean, they, they don't understand that. I, I got to help them. I tell my grandgirls. The grown one. Amen. I tell my grown ones here. I was listening. Y'all been to college and had your brains expanded. I said, why y'all keep following people that's broke? Everybody you fool with is broke. You don't never follow nobody that's successful. Why do we do that? Why you want to get into something with somebody they ain't got nothing. Every time you see them, they bombing and begging. Bombing and begging with the hand out. Handful of gimmies and a mouthful of merch of <laughs> All right. I, you know what we used to say when we were young? Gimme got drowned in a Coca-Cola bar. <laughs> Why do you want young people? You Listen here, young people. You can be distinct and different as a member of the body of Christ. Follow somebody that's doing something positive right. for the Lord. Amen. Don't worry about this earthy stuff. God will take care of you. Right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this stuff will be added to you. Right. I mean, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It's out there. God wants you to have all this stuff. But he doesn't want it to make a fool out of it. Amen. Stop following people ain't doing nothing. Amen. No. Mm -mm. No. Pretty good. Good example. Are uh, we setting a good example as a church of Christ? I said, John Shannon, are you setting a good example as a gospel preacher? You're talking to me. You got. I got to set a good example. Everywhere I go. I got to look sharp. I got to act sharp. I got to pay my bills. Right. Preach, Brother Sam. I got to do what? I got to pay my bills. I don't need nobody calling up me and saying, your preacher, your pastor, ain't paying, don't paying his bill. 
That ain't no good example. You a member of the Church of Christ and you don't went out there and got all this stuff on a credit card. Now you're trying to file. What is it, chapter 18? Chapter 13? What is it? They crooked. Joe, they crooked. They crooked. Members of the church, when you do that, you are crooked. If you can't pay them folk, leave that stuff. Stop sell them all. Stop shopping. Shop on the internet. Amen. A lot of guys do that stuff in the church of Christ. Pay your bills. And while I'm on this now, if you in here and you remember the church of Christ, watch me now. And you owe somebody some money in the church, don't think they forgot it. Amen. Look at you can go to your grave, you can be in there dead. You know what? He he died. Look at that's that scoundrel owed me thirty dollars, and he done died. I ain't gonna never get my money. <laughs> that's the way they think. <laughs> Pay people. Yes, Keep your word. Amen. 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 Let's go on a little further. Example: en enemies are false. Caution about them. Paul, look at what Paul said. Paul said, for, uh, for many walk of whom I have told you often. Paul said, be cautious. Yeah. Then he says, he cried about them. He cautioned us about them, but he cried about them. Paul said, and now telling you even weeping. Paul was weeping over the condition. Let's stop a moment. Are you crying over the condition of your mother and daddy? I'm not talking about physically. Are you crying? Are you weeping over your brothers and sisters in your families, in the family that's living a sinful life? Are you crying over that? Are you crying over a church that's split and feuding, fussing and fight? Are you crying or laughing? When things go wrong at Jane Road, do you cry about it? You pray about it. Are you glad that something bad is happening? Paul said, I, I'm, I'm crying. I'm weeping. Wait a minute. It hurts me to see members of the church who are enemies of the cross. Well, let's go a little further. Here. Pretty good. Uh, he, he said, I'm, I'm crying about he, corruption about them. He said that they are. What do you mean are? They are. The enemies of the cross of Christ. Yes, sir. Look, he's talking about the Jews. That's in the context. Right. He said, beware of dogs. He, he describes them as dogs. You know, Jews hate, hated dogs. They wouldn't eat them. Right. Dogs and hogs. But that's the way they act. Beware of evil workers. They were talking about the Jews. Uh -huh. Why? Because Judaism was the biggest problem right. of the early church. Why? Because the denomination hadn't got started. Right. Right. That's right. Look at here. Evildoers, beware of concision. What do you mean concision? A cutting down off. What is that? Mutilate. Mutilate. Watch it. Jews saying circumcision for believers. These Jews were concision. In other words, the Jews back then were saying that you Gentile men need to be circumcised if you want to be accepted in the church. Right. That is false doctrine. Right. That's the enemy of the cross of Christ. Yes, and that was in. Well, let's go a little further here. Uh, end of the fraud. Look at their doom. Brother, please get this. If you do wrong and never change, you're going to end up in destruction. Yes, right. wait, wait a minute. I'm going to do it easy. I want you to hear this. Listen to me carefully. Don't think that you can start off doing wrong and go for years and never change that you're going to end up right. Won't work. Don't start off a relationship that's wrong. Time ain't going to change that. You're just going to be wrong a long time. Amen. Amen. Whose end is destruction. All right. Look at their desires. Their God. Whose God, small g, is their own betters. Their appetite. And let me tell you something. Back then, they had religious racketeers. 
and you got them in the church of Christ, religious like bracketeers. I would call the name, but I, I want to live a little longer. <laughs> they, what do you mean religious like? They, all, they up for, you know what they're doing? They're just up for the money. they showboating, trying to look good and impress you right. on flabbiest words and how good they can sing and all that stuff. And guess what? They won't tell you the truth. Right. That God is their own belly. What you mean? All they think about is physical stuff. Right. And their glory, and whose glory is their shame. Their glory. And their goal, watch it. Who mind earthly things? That's all they think about is earthly stuff. And let's go here and look at these classes here. Pretty good? Look what we got. We got conscious and corruptness. Look at these world religions. Watch this. Don't you listen carefully. Islam, brethren, listen. Islam know what they're doing. They're, they are enemies yes, of the cross of Christ. Yes, and anybody in Washington, D.C. or anywhere else tell me different, you're wrong. Right. Islam is against true Christianity. Right. The cross of Christ. Amen. Hinduism. They know what they're doing. That Buddhism. Confucianism. And Judaism. They ain't for the cross of Christ. I know you all saw the inauguration of our new president. I know you saw it. And they had these denominational preachers and ladies up there praying. They had one Jewish guy up there, a rabbi. You know why he didn't mention Jesus? Because he don't believe in the deity of Christ. He don't believe no Jesus Christ is the son of God. Jews don't believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. They don't believe that. Amen. They believe in God, but they don't believe in Christ. And actually, if you don't believe in Christ, you can't believe in God. Amen. Jews don't believe in no Jesus Christ. And that was the biggest problem that the early church had in the first century was Judaism. And that's an ignorant, my ignorant denominational friends think that the Jews are God's chosen people. And that is false doctrine. Jews, wait a minute, the Jews are not God's chosen people. The Israel of God is the church of Christ. Look at Galatians 6, 16, 15 and 16. That pretty good? We are the Israel of faith not the Israel of flesh. Amen, Preach, Brother Shannon, Amen. in Galatians chapter 3 and verse, uh, what is it, 615, it says, now nah, Galatians, you got it? What does it say? For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, or uncircumcision, but a new creature, is that right? Uh -huh. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The Israel of God is they are the members of the church of Christ. That's not Baptist. Nope. Amen. That's enough there. Then we got the unconscious and courageous. Catholicism. You ever see them? You ever see them? See, see how they got crosses everywhere? And the enemies of the cross. Don't even know it. The nuns wear all them beads and big old cross hanging down the end of the cross. They make the sign of the cross and the enemies of the cross. They don't even know it. They don't even know it. What do you mean? They hinder what the cross of Christ does. You got it? Salvation. Pretty good? Now, denominationalism. They're enemies of the cross of Christ. Let me give an illustration so you can understand what I mean by unconscious enemies. They, some of them mean well but they don't know they're doing bad. Right. Now, let me give you an illustration about this young girl, about 16 years old. She was da driving her daddy's car, and she had a real bad accident. And the police came there, and she was, she, she was dying. She was bleeding. And so the police made two phone calls. He called the daddy, and he called the doctor. You got it? Well, uh, when he called the daddy, the daddy, just like a lot of us, he had messed around and was sitting on E in his car and got out there and cranked crank his car 
He didn't have no gas. He ran out. You know how we do sometimes? Lay around, wait till the last minute. Out and it's running on E. Well, he got that call and he just reached in his plugging part and pulled out his pistol. He said, the first car passed through here. Man, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to get it because I got to go get my daughter. So he showed up. He pulled the pistol out. Boom, there was a man there. He said, get out, man. I got to get it. He got, and got on down. Well, the doctor had been called and the doctor that was hijacked that was the doctor. The man was hijacked. He was the doctor. So finally, the man got there and the girl dying in his arm. And here come, here come, look here, 15 minutes later, here come the doctor come dragging up with his bag. The doctor, if you had made it here in time, my daughter uh, would have made it. He said, yeah, I tried. I, everything was working fine. And then some idiot came with a 45 and held me up and took my car. Now, wait a minute. He meant good, but he was unconscious of the damage that he was doing. Right. He kept the very man from getting there on time because he didn't know what he was doing. You all understand that, don't you? See that? Sam, you get that, Sam? Sam said, Brother Sam, I got that. <laughs> unconscious. He, unconscious. You know, sometimes we go to the hospital, and I won't tell you, fellow, when you go to the hospital, you know, they don't do it like they used to. They used to have the line, the airline laying all on the floor, you know. And God come up there and said, you know, I just really love you and I'm just so glad. And they were standing all on the lines to the airline. And the lady said, well, what, what's wrong with you? Like here? And finally the nurse said, him, say, hey, man, your mama going to die if you don't get off the line. <laughs> they were loving their mama, but they were cutting out. <laughs> Unconscious enemies. Do you all see that? You may be in a church that's not in the Bible. You may be in a church. You may be jumping, having a good time, praising God your way. All of that stuff. Guess what? See, denominationalism signifies division. And division is contrary to the cross of Christ. Because his prayer was that we all may be one. Now, I won't stop and ask the question. Just want you to think. Be, be honest. Do you think that all these different churches that's not even in the Bible, just because they say they believe in God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the Bible, do you think that we're together? No. Just, I just want you to think. Mm. Just, just think a minute. Just think. Look here. If I give you one, one recipe, you got it? For an apron. Got it? And on this apron, guess what you have? You got one place to put a pin. We're going to give you all the pattern for that. And everybody take the pattern and go home. And if you come back with a pocket here and a pocket here, <laughs> see, you done changed it. Because the pattern didn't call for the pocket. It just called for a place for the pin. Right. Now we all standing up. And I'm going checking the pattern. It was some, wait, wait a minute. You, you got the place for the pen. What these two pockets? He said, well, you didn't say not to put no pockets on there. <laughs> now, watch what, this here. In the Lord's church, he got his own rules in his church. Guess, guess what one is rule in the worship? That we sing. He just said sing. And make melody in your heart to the Lord. Somebody said, why the folks in Church of Christ don't have no pianos and organs and stuff? Same reason that it ain't, you don't have no right to put these pockets on that apron. Why well, ain't, ain't in the pattern? Show me in the New Testament pattern where we can have a choir. Don't have that? Wait a minute. And people get all mad and say, y'all can't afford no piano. Y'all don't know how to praise God. Well, let's go back over here. Wait a minute. What does the pattern call for? One pocket. You got two more on there. You've changed. You didn't go by. Now, let me ask a question. The church you in, do you have mechanical instruments of music? Yeah. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Well, let me tell you something. Watch this. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, if you got mechanical instruments of music in your church worship, 
from the New Testament, can you show me where God told you to do it? Now we know that he told us to sing. Now where did he say play? Wait a minute, somebody says it's in the Bible. Well, I know it's in the Bible, but it ain't in the New Testament pattern. Now, I show you a lot of stuff in the Bible that you won't use today. I can show you where they had animal sacrifice in the Bible and burnt offering. Look here, I don't see you putting no burnt offering. He didn't tell you not to do it. I hear the sound of music, the trumpet. I don't smell no beef. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? I hear the sound. Where's the burnt where the burn offering and beef? And they just jumping, child, we had a good time. Let me tell you what that mechanical instrument is music for. It's for people in churches the same way, same reason that they have music at a nightclub. You know what that instrument of music for? It's there for this. Look at this. M O N E Y. Because people love music. Mechanical music. And you add a little singing to it, man, you can get down now, man. We can get down. And guess what? When they start getting down, the music going, guess what? They start taking a collection, they just give everything. They ain't getting it. Just think about nothing. Let's get it rent money and everything. Don't know how to get it. Child, we man, we man, didn't he play that piano? Didn't that girl sing? Yes. Guess what? Enemies of the cross of Christ. And a lot of members of the Church of Christ who came out of that foolishness, they want to bring that stuff in the church. Right, man. Oh no, man. If God wanted some mechanical music, he would have told us. Right. Mechanical music. That we have instruments that you can't worship God without an instrument. Right. But it's not mechanical. Right. Let's look at Ephesians 5.19. Let's look at it. I got to work with this. Amen. Every one of them. Every one of them got those mechanical instruments of music. They got them in there. Yeah, they got them. Yes, Ephesians 5.19. Look what it said. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms. What did it say? Singing. Humming. Singing. Clapping. Singing. Singing. And making melody on the piano. You can't worship God unless you have an instrument. Well, what's the instrument? It's the harp. Right. To the Lord. All right? Like Colossians 3. Colossians 3, that, this is good, isn't it? I got to start off some good teaching here. It's about time for these gospel meetings. Uh, Colossians 3, 16 and 17, let's look at it. Colossians 3, look at this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Where is the word of Christ? It listen. Is it in the Old Testament or New? Think. It's in the New Testament. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Where is it? His last will and testament. It's the New Testament. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and all wisdom, watch it, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs Let's go back. Teaching. The song that we sing is a teaching true or false. If we're singing stuff that's false, you can't do that. You got to sing truth. Sometimes guys sing songs they ain't thought about it. It's just sound good. You can't do that, man. Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. He's telling you what to do. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing what? Now one another means what? Everybody singing. That knocks out the choir. The little choir over here. Child, they got a good choir. No, we got a great big choir. Everybody singing. Admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, what? 
Sing what? Sing. What? Sing. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Now, I, you listen. You can make any other argument you want. There is no authority for mechanical instruments of music right. in New Testament worship. Well, in my church, they got mechanical. We got a pen. Well, wait, wait a minute. You said it right. That's your church. You started it. You named your pastor named it. Y'all do what you want to do in it. The blood of Christ didn't buy it. Because the blood of Christ only bought one body. And that's the church. And brethren, we got to stand on that. You got to stand on it. Anybody preach anything different than that, they're enemies of the cross of Christ. Amen, somebody. Pretty good. Well, how do you get in the church? I used to see denominations of preachers get up and preach. And some of them guys can preach. Turn the church upside down. And say the doors of the church are open. Come by a letter, Christian experience. Where'd that come from? The doors of the church open. On the day of Pentecost, Peter preached the first gospel sermon. He didn't say no doors of the church was open. He didn't do that kind of stuff. These people have to hear and believe the gospel. How Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, bought one, one, one church for all people. Wait a minute. What color? Ain't no color. Right. It's a spiritual organization. Yes, and it's big enough for everybody to get in. Yes, right. He died and was buried. He rose again from the dead. And he ascended back to heaven. And he's reigning right now. You got to believe that. Yes, sir. You got it? You, got, you can't believe. That's what I believe the end of the church to do. You can't be saved. Because no, you're already denying that there's one body in the one faith. One body. What's the one body? The church. Which one? Paid with the blood of Jesus. Now question. Did Jesus Christ blood by the Baptist church? No. Make it hey, well, hold it. Make it hold it. Did his blood by the Catholic church? If it did, it ought to be written in the Bible. Right. Now the church you in, did the blood of Jesus buy? Right. Did he buy the Bellevue Baptist church with it? You ought to be able to read it. Right. Are you picking? I'm not picking on any of it. And these guys in these different pastors, they know the truth. But they know if they start preaching like I'm doing, you know what's going to happen? They're going to leave. And, and you know what? If they only knew, if they only knew that those religions are fraudulent, they stop putting their money in there. They wouldn't even go no more. What you say? When I found out that the Roman Catholic Church was not in the Bible, I cut all that money off. Went to the priest and said, I need my, all my money back because the Roman Catholic Church is not in the Bible. They wouldn't even give me my money back. I'm telling you, if you're in a church not in the Bible, you're just wasting your money. It ain't doing no good at all. Amen. 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 All the time members of the Church of Christ go to the nomination of church and drop some money in it. For what? What are you doing? Can you imagine this? Here's a building that's on fire and you run over there throwing gas on it. You don't even know what you're doing. Anytime you help the nomination of people, you are helping, hindering the cross of Christ. You are an enemy of the cross of Christ. Preach it, Brother Santa. You got to hear that gospel and believe it. Christ died. He was buried. He rose again the third day. He ascended into heaven. Do you believe that? He is king in the kingdom. He's the head of the church. Now you got to repent of your sin. What do you mean? All this junk, you got to change your mind about it. You're going to have to come out. And we got some members of the Church of Christ. Went back to the world. Just keep on man around over there. Right. Keep on going around, messing with the world. Right. You're going to get caught right there in the middle. Yes, sir. You're going to get caught. You're going to die in your sin. Somebody needs to tell you right now, plain as day, you better come out of that junk. Right, come on back home. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Somebody say, I ain't never heard nothing like this in my life. Never. You've been going to the wrong place. Amen. You got to repent of your sin. Change your mind about sin and stuff. A lot of members of the Church of Christ here need to repent today. Yes, a lot of members of the Church of Christ need to repent. Right. Now you here and you're not a member of the church. You got to, what you mean repent? 
You got listening. You can't, you can't mess with that church no more. What you say? We don't mind you going down there one more time and tell your pastor you ain't coming back. Tell him. He ain't no more than nobody else. I don't follow nobody to hell. I don't like nobody that way. Tell him. Say so you robbed my mama, my grandmama, and all my kin people. And he, listen, he done tricked them a long time. Tell him I ain't coming back no more. Tell him. Tell him. Repent of your sin. Make the confession. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You got to make that confession. You know you still ain't saved. Right. Why? Because Jesus, watch it, said, go preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now the saint, listen, what the, what the baptism, I don't see nothing wrong. What, what does baptism got to do with it? You just, you know what, there's something wrong with you. You always trying to see something. Just see something. Oh, I, I tell you, what, I like these. These Amen. Y- y'all ever see these computers? Y'all ever send a text on a computer? You, you type it out or you just speak it in there? It ain't going to move until you hit that arrow, says. There's an arrow like this here. Say, see. Now, let me ask you something. What in the world does sin have to do with you getting the message? If you don't send it, you won't get it. Right. You got to sin. Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. That's the sin. Yes, sin. Well, I don't see nothing in it. I don't see nothing in that little arrow that says sin. You don't have to see nothing. Guess what? And sometimes I text my wife in the house and I build her talking to her and some say, whoop! She got it just that quick. She got the message just that quick. And then guess what? When you hear the gospel and believe it, repent of your sin, confess Christ, and baptize in water, boom! Soon you're baptized, you're in the church. Amen. And didn't even have to join. Yeah, right. yeah, in just that quick. Yeah, you're saved. Yeah, All your sins are washed away. Yeah, that's, right. that's it. That's enough. Right? What are you going to say? Huh? Salvation has been. Now you know what you're going to say? Pass me not, old gentle say. Shall we stand? Is that all right? We certainly hope you enjoyed today's lesson, The Enemies of the Cross of Christ. Thank you as always. God bless you.